I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to the Ex-Mormon Files, another episode, and I'm so pleased today to, to introduce you to Karma Naylor. Karma is uh, just a joy, and she's written two different books, actually about the same, your journey, an unex a Mormon's unexpected journey. And these books can be picked up at utlm.org, at mormonismtograce.com, at Barnes & Noble, and on Amazon. And if you go to Amazon, you'll read some reviews and learn exactly what others are th saying and thinking about a Mormon's unexpected journey. So, Karma, so nice to have you come here and share your story. Well, thank you for yeah. having me. Well, my I'm pleasure. excited. Yeah. So, as we usually do, where do you hail from? Where were you born? And what's your early Mormon history? Oh, well, my history goes back to the pioneers really? in the Martin Handcart Company, actually. Wow. Okay, the Nailers? Uh, no. Well, that would my, no, that's your maiden name. Yes, my, my father's family. My mother's posterity. Yeah. My, both of them migrated over as oh, pioneers, goodness. and it helped to establish Ogden. So. Oh, and that's uh, where you were born? My great-great-grandmother died on the journey. They were in the, mm -hmm. you know handcart yeah. pushing their possessions and her two sons they actually starved and froze to death on oh, that journey that was so a lot of hard, hard I, time, you know it? mormonism was my heritage my yeah. culture my faith in god it was my identity as a person yeah. i think i know what, i know <laughs> what you mean your dad was a bishop and your family yes. was active they were married oh very in, much they so they were married in yeah. the temple and my dad had an answer for every question I ever asked, and he had one one room in our house was dedicated to his library from ceiling to floor. Just all the books, I always huh? thought every Mormon book published was in his library. He was very knowledgeable, wow. and I really believed it. He was a visionary man and yeah. had some very unusual spiritual experiences, so I, I just totally believed Mormonism with all my heart. Yeah. Did you take seminary and do the oh, yes. the, I, the young women's activities? Oh yeah, and all got that all stuff? the awards in young women's, went to full time seminary, yeah. went on a full time mission to New Zealand, oh. came back and went to BYU, met my husband there, who was also a returned missionary, yeah. also a fifth generation Mormon. Wow, well, we get to meet him next week. Uh, I'm excited to talk to him. Yeah. And then you get married in the temple and yes. and eventually have eight children, I understand. Yes. That's true. I sure tremendous. do. You have 32 grandchildren right now. Wow, good for you. Congratulations. <laughs> so there just wasn't any question in your mind that the church was true, obviously, from what you're saying. And I mean, it was just a strong testimony of Joseph Smith and the Book of Mormon and Yes. Temple work and everything. Yes. Yeah. So what happened? <laughs> the big question. Well, at the age of 40, I had a very close friend who was Jewish. Oh. And I felt that she was meant to be a Mormon. She was my golden contact. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> she didn't want to talk religion. She knew Jesus was an imposter. She'd plug her ears at Christmas time. So 
after five years, I just felt impressed to take her a New Testament. I told her to read the Gospel of Matthew. I didn't realize at that time that Matthew had written specifically to the Jews. Oh, because yeah. there's so many quotes from the Old Testament. Sure. So anyway, the next morning, she was at my door. She had read the whole gospel, and she, with tears in her eyes, said Jesus was her Messiah. <laughs> and it's such a witness to the power of the Word of God. I wow. love that. But I thought for sure she'd be a Mormon, and uh, she went to church, took the missionary lessons, but there were things that she just couldn't buy into, and I ended up moving, and... And uh, after a few years, I realized she was studying with Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh. And I decided, oh, I can't let my golden contact be deceived. <laughs> so my quest was to show her from the Bible that Mormonism was the one and only true church, and she was being deceived by Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay. She didn't want to talk about any of the other Mormon scriptures, but yeah. we could have Bible studies together. And she was drawn to the idea, I guess, of Jehovah being the God of the Old Testament and so on. Yes. So that was drawing her. So um, I really believed that I loved the Bible as a Mormon. Yeah. I read the Bible and I thought, I have no problem. The Bible's the Word of God. I, I felt... The Lord would sure. help me defend His truth well, yeah, from we, the Bible. We believe the Bible. I mean, Mormons believe the Bible to be the Word of God. So through this quest and this study, she would force me to, to take the scriptures that I would use to teach what I now know to be heretical doctrines, put them in context. Oh, in and I was beginning to see some things that were creating some big cracks. And that was uh, scriptures taken out of context. And that the interpretation I had been taught by prophets of God yeah. weren't accurate. And that was pretty devastating. You know, Peter says at the end of his epistle, those who rest the scriptures do so to their own destruction. <laughs> rest meaning distort or yeah, misinterpret. W -R -E -S -T, yeah. So I, I started having some issues at this point, and then I surrendered. I said, Lord, I want to understand the Bible the way you meant it to be understood. Well, and th that was such a big step for you, wasn't it? Oh, well, it's huge. I mean, we don't, we, I keep saying we, but the LDS really don't trust the Bible as far as it's translated correctly, right? I mean, I, as a Mormon, I can speak for myself, you know, uh, we didn't make it our authority for no, truth. Our prophets right, were. Right. But we loved the Bible, yeah. didn't leave it out. But right. if there was something that contradicted Mormon doctrine, then the Bible was in error. Yeah. And she kept challenging me, give you me your evidence that the Bible is in error. I will give you all the evidence that has been translated correctly. And she'd keep talking about manuscript evidence, of which I had didn't never, know anything. Yeah, I never heard, yeah. And so I finally came to the realization, okay, it's either the Mormon prophets or it's the Bible, because I was not only finding uh, scriptures taken out of context, but I was finding scriptures that clearly contradicted Mormon doctrine. <laughs> and I'm going, oh, well, this is a big problem. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So... Did you I, ever share these thoughts with anybody? Well, my husband knew I was studying with studying, her. Yeah. And she, she was a... A fairly new Christian so she mm -hmm. she'd say well I can't answer your questions she she'd have me talking to her Jehovah's Witness friends too mm -hmm. and they're challenging me with all these things and so finally I thought well I'll research the reliability of the Bible oh my goodness <laughs> and I was trying to find evidence for the errors sure and it was just overwhelming that I I could trust the Bible, and it was God's Word. Yeah. And um, I guess my real moment of deliverance, I would have to say deliverance, <laughs> and when I was transformed, I was comparing the Bible with the Joseph Smith translation. Oh, his Joseph Smith, yeah. Uh, which you, I think it's called the Inspired Version now. Yeah, the Inspired Version. Uh -huh. It used to be the JST. Oh, the JST. It yeah. used to be Joseph the Inspired Smith Version. Yeah. And I was just overwhelmed. I, I had just learned how accurate the Bible has, God has preserved it for us. Yeah. It, it, 
if it's a variance, it's a spelling or a rearrangement of words. Yeah. And here he's added verses, verses, yeah. and often changing the meaning and then the words of the ending of Revelation, if anybody adds to the words of this book. And I'm thinking, yeah. well, that's just the book of Revelation. Uh, yeah. So that's I'm studying, that's what we were yeah. time studying. Yeah. Did he make changes in that? He did. And I mean, this went on over a period of months, you have to understand, and dialogue yeah. with my Jewish friend and researching and... And thinking and mulling praying. it all over and praying. I know it's the same thing I did. You just, it, you don't do it all at once. You just, no. you wake up in the morning thinking about it. And well, how does this relate to this? And and you can't stop thinking about yeah. it. I mean, it's your your faith, your religion. You, you don't want to doubt. But yeah. by this point, my doubts... I'm trying to stuff them down, <laughs> ignore them. Still Gotta going, be strong. Still going to church, I'm oh, assuming. Oh, absolutely. And, sure. And. So, uh, and nobody knew. My husband knew I was having discussions, but he's like, oh, I'm not worried. You're strong. You know. Yeah. Well, this very day, I, I, when I realized, are the plagues of the book of Revelation going to be on Joseph Smith? For adding, for adding to words yeah. to the book of Revelation. Yeah. I mean, Moses said it in Deuteronomy, so it could be the whole book. And Proverbs 35, do not add to my word. I will rebuke you and prove you a liar. <laughs> and I'm going, what about me? I, I'm following him. I proclaim him to be a prophet. And at that moment, I kid you not, I... I had a very demonic attack that was dark, frightening, the scariest experience of my life. And my spirit was hearing, how dare you doubt Joseph Smith? We will destroy you. And I thought, my Mormon mind thought, God's angry at me for doubting yeah, Joseph cool. Smith. Yeah. I could finally say to myself, I'm doubting him. and. I, it was horrible. It was frightening, very fearful. And I kept apologizing to God, please deliver me from this demonic dark force that yeah. wants to destroy me. I'm sorry. I'll believe in <laughs> Joseph Smith that the, that the evil wouldn't leave. Oh and goodness. finally I said, okay, Lord, if I'm wrong, I want to know now. If I lose my husband, my family, my friends, everything, I want to be right with you more than I want to live. I want your truth, and I don't want to get the other side and find out I'm wrong. I'm ready to know right now. At the moment I said that prayer, the darkness was replaced with the most glorious warmth, love, light, joy, peace. Yeah. And I, I, I didn't hear an audible voice, but it couldn't have been any stronger than my Savior saying to me, Karma, you belong to me. I did it all on the cross. Mm -hmm. I'm sufficient. You have burdened yourself with 40 years of trying to be good enough for me through yeah. Mormon laws and ordinances, and you don't and, need them. And they don't need I'm and, uh, the way, the truth, and the life. And wow. I was transformed, born again, and never the same again. <laughs> and once your eyes are open, you just can't, you just can't see it any other way, right? I mean, well, no. when God moves in, and, and you know that for tr to be true. The thing that was so wonderful was my whole life, I had tried so hard to be good enough for Jesus, yeah. and I couldn't be, <laughs> and that was gone. I, I was accepted by him. I was his. I, ha I knew I was going to be with him. He could, he could come any time, and I was ready, and but I could have feel... never been ready as a Mormon. No, you never would have. You would have always felt guilty I that did. you hadn't done enough. I couldn't do enough. Yeah. And yeah. my whole life was the church and my family, and yet I'd, I was, I had always felt like one of the five foolish virgins uh -huh. instead of the wise. And I'd say, what's the extra oil, Lord? What's <laughs> wrong? What's missing? What am I missing? You and I was that. missing his grace. I, was, I didn't understand the cross. That's what was missing. I hadn't given my life to Jesus. I had given it to an, Mormons, a religion. Mormons just don't understand that, do they? That, that it was done on the cross. And, and that's why and I wrote these blood. books. Yeah. I want them to understand Well, that. and the subtitle is Finding the Grace I Never Knew. And you know, they misunderstand the purpose of the temple and the temple that was in Jerusalem and in the shedding of blood there and how Jesus represents that shedding of blood on the oh. cross. And, 
That's I have a chapter in book two. It's called Jesus, Our High Priest Forever. And our Why only high priest. No man right? should be ordained a high priest. He is the that only high priest. priest. He fulfilled the role. He shed his blood. Yeah. And, and uh, they, they just have a whole different yeah. religion, I'm sorry to say. So did you ever talk to your dad about this? I know you said sometime that you used to have some wonderful theological discussions with him. Were you able to share this with him, and what oh, did yes. he say? Days of talks with him. And my husband, I was, I just wanted to tell everybody what had happened sure. to me. You know, they'd say, the devil answered your prayers. Uh -huh. Everybody said that to me. But my husband and my kids would be like, Mom, what happened to you? You look so happy. And where'd you get all your patience? And they'd see all this goodness in me and then turn around and Isn't say, but the devil answered your prayers. Yeah. It was the devil. And I'd say, sense. no, you know, Jesus said, Satan doesn't cast out Satan. You forgot. Jesus delivered me from a satanic attack. Yeah. It wasn't, uh, but the, oh my goodness, I was called the devil's henchman and a demon. And, and I'll have to say, from the courage standpoint, this was 30 years ago or so, right? Yes. You were kind of almost alone out there. I mean, I don't know if you were aware of a few of the others, the Tanners. No, and I knew others, nobody. Marv I knew Cowan nobody. and some others that were doing this. Where were you at during this time? Was this? We were in Southern California. California. Our children. So you had no support, really. No. I mean, no. there weren't Mormons coming out, certainly like they are now and having programs like this and other support. <laughs> what Did you just feel alone? Oh, or? all alone. Yeah. I, I guess I, my spirit was so free and happy that the battle of the flesh began. Yeah. It, it was very alone, lonely. I, 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 at times I, I didn't know if I could keep faith in God because I felt like he had told me the Mormon church was true and now he's telling me it's wrong. And I kept actually going with my husband for Good four church. years, yeah. except I would go to other churches. I was going everywhere. I was going to Kingdom Hall, Seventh Day Adventist, Baptist Church. I was trying I them all. <laughs> not all at once, yeah. but I would I was so intent on, okay, where is your true church? I didn't understand church you kind where of had a sense of ones. there had to be a true church somewhere. Yeah, and finally, after years, I, I got the point. No, <laughs> it's the body of believers in Christ. It's <laughs> not a denomination. Even, or Even more freedom, right? Oh, boy, steps of freedom yeah. all along the way. And I, I had so many questions that, it, that I was afraid to be too quick to form an absolute opinion. I didn't ever want to be so positive of my own opinion that I was not teachable. Not to learn, yeah. That's so I, right. I was very cautious yeah. for quite a long time and just trying to learn. And Well, I guess we'll hear Charles' side of the story here during, the, I know there was a period of time when, when things were pretty tense, but oh, did yes. you, how did you feel going into a Christian church the first time? Um, do you I, that? I I was very nervous. I would say, "Do you really want me to do this, Lord?" I I sort of felt like He had wrapped me around this warm blanket and pulled me up and was dangling me, and I didn't know where I belonged. And I'd feel like, yeah. "Will I ever belong anywhere again?" You know the the community, the sisterhood, the sense of being needed, the yeah. sense of that community is, is very hard to walk away from. And I, I would go to church, but I'd have a migraine headache for three days. I'd be practically dysfunctional after a while because I, the more I would church, go to we, the LDS church, yeah. the more I could see the unbiblical problems and the praise of man and the no emphasis, not, not no emphasis, but the emphasis on church and Jesus was just so minimized. Yeah. And, it was like going to my mother's funeral. I didn't want to find out the church was false. I'm sure you didn't either. No, that wasn't the plan originally, <laughs> that's for sure. But you couldn't deny it once it happened in, in the no. Bible. What, and, of course, what does the Bible mean to you now? Oh, it's the bread of life. It's my life. It's, well, Jesus is my life. But sure. I, and uh, even at that point, I wouldn't go anywhere without it. Yeah. It went everywhere with me. Every yeah. minute I had, I was reading the reading Bible. The Bible. Yeah, I love the Bible, and uh, it 
it became alive to me. And mm -hmm. God is so good. Well, I know, and it's just amazing that um, that He would let us know, let us know some of these things, since, like you say, we weren't really looking for for that. You were actually trying to support someone else coming into the church. Absolutely. Yes, I was sure she was meant to be a Mormon. And yeah. So and has your your father's passed by now? I, I yes. Guess by now and, and he he would always say to me over the years that I was writing. I didn't intend originally to have two published books. I just wanted to write, and I just kept writing, writing. And you just felt the need to share. As I learned more and yeah. experiences and things kept happening and struggles. Yeah. Uh, my books are like reading my journals, but they're also very theological. But my dad would say, are you still writing your hate book? Oh, your hate book. I'd say, it's not a hate book. It's a book about Jesus and, and the difference between Mormonism and, and biblical Christianity. But anyway, he read the manuscript before he died. Oh, he did? And it wasn't published yet. What did he say? And he treated me with so much more warmth. And he, before I gave him the manuscript, he always said, all anti-Mormon literature is gossip. So when I gave him the manuscript, I gave him a red pen. And I said, you circle gossip and I'll take it out. I'm not, I don't want a book of gossip. You want I want a book of truth. And truth and he didn't take out anything except some of the things I would quote him as saying in our dialogues. He's quite an important person in the first book. Right. He would fix them and say, I didn't say the Holy Ghost looked like a man. I said the Holy Ghost appeared to me in the form of a beautiful man. And he'd make me say it exactly the way he would say it. Oh. And so he just made it more accurate, really. <laughs> well, was it? But he actually, the last few years of his life, he totally changed. Did he, he really? He said, I shouldn't want to die to go see Dorothy. That was my mom. Yeah. And she had been dead for many yeah. years, and he oh. missed her. So yeah, I should want to die to go see Jesus, shouldn't I? Yeah. And then he said, I don't want to be a god anymore. <gasps> but the final thing was one day he said, I'm saved by the blood of Jesus. And I, I literally danced around his front room and gave oh. him a big hug. He just sat there and smiled at me. You think you, you must have really taught him? He never denounced Mormonism, and no. he never wanted to acknowledge that but my books had a good impact. Jesus but Jesus and his shed blood. He certainly okay. was going through some changes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, was this, uh, and I know these years were, were tough, uh, as you lived, I guess, all in California there, but, uh, and what, what changes have you seen that have been important to you as you've seen the, the last 20 or 30 years? Any changes in the... Mormon Christian debate. I mean, what do most Mormons misunderstand, for example, do you think? Well, I think they misunderstand grace and they misunderstand why Jesus died on the cross. The, yeah. the thing I want them to understand is that he's not part of the way. He's not, you know, my dad would always say, well, we can't get to first base without Jesus. And I want them to know, no. He gets your home plate. He does it all. I mean, it, it, we're not set free to sin, but we're set free from the curse of the law that we're all under. We're not yeah. all children of God, born perfect. We're born sinners, and we're not going to make it unless we're born again and we surrender to Jesus. Yeah. And religious ordinances and rituals don't do it. I just want them to understand that. But it seems like the change I see within the Mormon church is that they don't want to really teach Mormonism. And they are focused, they want the world to see them as Christians so much. They're yeah. more focused on talking about Jesus. Yeah. But they still don't understand his deity. They don't realize he's God in the flesh. Yeah. And that he's the only one that could pay our penalty of sin. But they certainly this last conference seemed to want to emphasize the Savior more, the atonement more than I've ever heard before. Yeah. And when I talk to the missionaries, it seems like they want to deny that they can become gods until I 
corner room is still in your 132nd section of the yeah. DNC, isn't it? And, uh, you know, those things are, are big changes from when I was raised a Mormon. I, yeah, I think that, and I was going to ask you earlier on about the Dead Sea Scrolls when you were talking about the validity of the Bible and how that, that when the Dead Sea Scrolls came along and, and basically proved that the Old Testament had been preserved just just. Uh, just as it was, and that the great and abominable church hadn't changed it, and oh, that must have been a great support too. But well, and and I, the Book of Mormon really puts the Bible down in First Nephi thirteen. Oh, sure it does. Where many plain and precious things are taken out of it, but it goes on that the this wicked, abominable church did these things to pervert the yeah. ways of the Lord. It it wasn't meaningless translators making. Yeah. accidental mistakes it was a purpose yeah. perversion and if you finish the chapter it even says in so much as it causes people to be in Satan's power so I always I ask the missionaries now how can you really say you believe the Bible and you believe that too <laughs> you can't well tell us just a little bit about the hope you have as a Christian now is there a, kind of give the Mormons that might be listening or uh, just a sense of what what really this this change is in our lives. Right. Don't be afraid. I believe we all have questions and doubts that arise at times. When you had we're, we're, questions we're about the temple, right? And yes. Things, yeah. Yes. The so temple questions bothered come up. me. Yeah. Uh, I even had a leader say to me once, well, we all have waves of doubt. You just focus on the good, put the problems on the shelf, and you'll get over it. Yeah. Just keep active, keep serving. So I think everybody does have doubts. Don't be afraid because that isn't the devil giving you doubts. Yeah. That's the Lord trying to get you to think, think a and investigate and yeah. not just believe what you're told. You've got to see both sides. Yeah. That most of all, is it is the most wonderful thing in the world to have an assurance of faith that you belong to Jesus. And you don't have to live under that burden of never being good enough. And you know that you're going to make it and you're going to be in His kingdom, not because of anything we do, but everything that He did. That, well, that is did. so wonderful. There's nothing better than that. Nothing. And it's such a simple message, isn't it? Yes. I and mean, it's so beautiful. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is simple. It's not all the added things that the Mormon prophets have burdened yeah. it. And, well, like Paul says in uh, Galatians, if we or an angel from heaven preach any, any other, other gospel than that which we have they preached, need to read let and find him out be what Paul accursed. Said. Well, karma, our time's gone. <gasps> Can you believe it? That was great. <laughs> it was just wonderful. Thanks for coming. And again, if you have a chance, pick up these books and uh, you'll really enjoy them. It's a wonderful story. Goodbye. Thank you. Oh, Did I